Hey, what's up guys? Skylar Thomas here. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to do the logo morph effect that I used in my last video, which was how to create a YouTube intro. It's a really cool effect that you can use with everything from morphing text to morphing shapes to morphing logos. Uh, I use it all the time, so I wanted to show you guys how to do it. So with that being said, I'm going to show you my workflow with it, which starts at the very beginning with getting the logos from a Google image search. So let's hop into our programs and I'll show you how to do it. Uh, ideally what you want to do is you want to search for a vector image first, but if you can't find that, uh, just search for the uh, highest resolution image that you can and then go from there. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go with just a, a high res or decent resolution image for the sake of the, the workflow that is required to show you that. So uh, we're going to start off by going into Google Images and we're going to search Premiere Pro logo. Go to images here, and the first thing we have is 2000 by 2000 pixels, that's huge, that's going to be fine, so we're going to right click that, go to save image as, and save that to the folder that we want to save it to. And it looks like we have the After Effects logo right here, uh, you can see that, it's a smaller resolution file, but it's still large enough, so that'll be fine, we can uh, match them up once we're in Illustrator, go to save image as, save that down, and we're good to go. All right, so now what we're going to want to do is take those two images and we want to open them up into Illustrator. And the reason I love Adobe so much is you can use Illustrator, which integrates in with Premiere, which integrates in with After Effects. They all integrate and, and work really well together. So that's why I highly recommend Adobe products. Uh, if you don't have Illustrator, what you can do is bring these logos right into After Effects and try to do an auto trace with them. But the problem is you've got these different colors and you've got these different shapes within the logo. Oftentimes what an auto trace will do, like with something like a Nike logo, is it just traces the outside. So what you'll end up getting is just a square out of it. If you set it to one of the, the color settings, you might be able to get some of the shapes out of here depending on the settings you get, but it's not always that easy. So I recommend if you do have Illustrator, you follow this workflow. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy over this Premiere image, hit copy, go into our After Effects, and we're just going to put them into the same uh, project file. Now what we're going to try to do is match up the size, get the size down to what we want it to be. I think that looks pretty good right there. And that is, if you look up here, maybe we'll set it, make sure that we're locked. And we'll go down to 900, 900 in width. So what I'm going to do is bring this down to 900 in width. And that should match up pretty well. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to image trace these uh, two logos so that we can actually make shape layers out of them. So to do that, you want to highlight the image and you're going to go up here to image trace. You're going to see what that did is it turned it into black and white. Uh, what we want to do is go to the preset and since it has so few colors, we can set it to three colors. Wait for it to initialize. And there we go and then we can go to expand. And now what you're going to see is that all these are broken into individual uh, shape layers. One problem that we do have is because uh, it does actually cut out the layer from this square right here. What we're gonna want to do is create a shape, a rectangle that is this size, and we wanna take that color, and we're going to want to just cover up where those holes might be. So now with that selected, hit control left bracket until you see those back again. And now it's all kind of set up the way we want it to. We're going to exit out of isolation mode and we're going to highlight this image right here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to image trace it. And we're going to do the same thing. Go to three colors. And then we're going to go to expand and it's going to do the same thing. I noticed that this actually has a little uh, external little shape there, so if we double click into that, we can actually just delete that right out. But in much the same way, what we're going to want to do is create that uh, same kind of square right here. So what we're going to want to do is grab our eyedropper, get that color, go up to our rectangle tool, 
create a shape over that. And then with that layer selected, we're going to want to go to controller command left bracket. This kind of plays with the, the layer order until we see it in the order that we want, and that looks good. And we're good to go. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to break these into uh, individual layers so that when we bring them into After Effects, we have control over each shape individually. So what we want to do is we want to go up to this Layers board right here. And then what we want to do is start creating new shapes. We're going to go into our two groups. We've got our Premiere Pro group. So what we want to do is we want to drag the P into a new, to a new layer, the R into a new layer, and we want the, the border to be in its own layer. And then we can keep the rest of these in layer 1, just like that. And now we want to go into the After Effects layers, go to maybe drag this down a little further. So the E can go to its own layer, the A can go to its own layer, the background can go to its own layer, and then the rest of these in this group can go into its own layer. I don't need this layer, so I'm going to trash it. And that's all we need to do within uh, Illustrator. You can see that uh, some of the layers got out of order, so what I'm going to do is actually bring these background layers down. And now we're, we're in a better order right there. All right, so we're going to save this. And real quickly, I'm just going to drag these layers, and I'm going to put them right on top of this one to kind of keep them in the same place. And now we're good. All right, so go into, go into After Effects now. And what we're going to do with a new project started is we're going to import this Illustrator, uh, Illustrator composition. We're going to import the kind as a composition. We're going to keep it as document size. Click OK. All right, so now what we're going to want to do is create a new composition. We're going to want to call this logo morphing something different than what we saved the Illustrator uh, file as. 1920 by 1080, background color is black, it's fine, click OK. And then from there, we're going to open up all of our layers and we're going to drag them in. Because what we need to do here is just with all those selected, we right click, go to Create, and Create Shapes from Vector Layer. This creates the exact same shapes within After Effects that uh, that Illustrator had and allows us to have a little bit more flexibility with the things that we do with them. So now with that being done, I'm going to delete out all those Illustrator layers. We no longer need them. All right, so now we're going to want to play with the uh, just organization of the layers real quick. Name them and uh, kind of set them up uh, so that they're all in the right structure. So what you can do here is go to visibility and just one by one rename them to what they are. All right, so now that these are ordered, let's worry about the actual morphing of the letters. So I'm going to turn off the Premiere border and the Premiere square for now. And then we've got our P and our, our E and our A. So what we want to do is we want to first morph the A. So go into uh, kind of do all the drop downs, go into contents, go to group one, and then we're going to go to path one and two. So we're going to open those up. We're going to set the keyframes for both the path one and the path two. And now what we want to do is bring this out to about a second or however long we want the animation to last. And we're going to go to our P, which is what we want it to turn into. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to open up the group, open up the, the two paths that are there. But instead of actually turning on the, key, the uh, stopwatches, we're just going to highlight that. We're going to go to Control or Command C to copy it. And then we're going to go down and we're going to highlight the path one. And with the area selected there, we're just going to hit Control or Command V to paste it. And then we're going to go up to our second path, and we're going to copy that just the way we did before. Control or Command C, go to our path two, and paste in the other one. So you're going to see that the A now morphs into a P. So now I can actually get rid of this P. We no longer need it. And we're going to do the R and the E. 
So we're gonna open up both the R and the E in the same way, bring them down till we get to the path. The R only has one path, which is fine. The E has two. We're gonna hit those stopwatches. And we're gonna bring them out to the same spot. We're gonna to go to our R here. We're going to Control C to copy it. And we're gonna highlight the path there. Control V. I'm just gonna do the same one for both since there's only one there. Kind of a cool look. And now we can get rid of our R. We don't need that anymore. But we are going to want to try to change the color if you wanna change the color, you don't have to. But to do that, you would just go into uh, the fill for each and you do the stopwatch there and you're gonna move it out to the same spot so it kind of morphs into that color. And we're actually gonna, we're gonna turn the, uh, the border back on so we can get that color. So now we can take the eyedropper and drop it onto that color and it's gonna morph the color from one to the next. And we'll do the same thing for the other one. Go to fill, hit that eyedropper, bring it out to the same spot. And there we go. The letters change color and they morph in. So now the only thing left to do is we want to have the uh, squares kind of fade out. So we're actually going to bring these down to the very bottom. And we can take, uh, we can hit U on one of these as reference to see where the keyframes are. And we're, with these two highlighted, the After Effects borders, we're just going to uh, bring up our opacity T. We'll hit the stopwatches and we'll just have, we'll just fade them out so that they reveal the premier squares underneath. Bring those down to zero. And just like that, boom. That's a logo morph right there. That's how you do it. All right guys, so that's how you do it. It is a little bit of a process when you're getting images from online that are, that are not simple logos, but uh, it, it's pretty easy to get through them nonetheless. Uh, shapes and text are done in the same way. You just want to create shapes out of the text um, and then you you basically copy and paste the actual path keyframes in from there. And there's so much you can do with this kind of effect. You know, there, there's a lot of ways you can utilize it. So I hope you guys got something out of this. It's awesome. Start coming up with creative ways to use it yourself and I'm sure you're gonna go far with all the motion graphics that you're creating. So thanks for watching guys. Please like and subscribe to my channel. As always, there's a lot more good stuff coming. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.